Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and today I want to talk to you about the benefit of decorative art store papers. Now when I say decorative papers from the art supply store, I mean when you go in the back of the store they have drawers that you can pull out, the flat drawers, and you get these big sheets of like 20 by 24 decorative paper. Or some stores will hang them over dowels sort of in a tall rack in the back of the store. Those are the decorative papers that I'm speaking of and a lot of the time they come with embossing, they come with gold foil, they come with inclusions of like little bits of leaves or fibers, um, or they have iridescent on them. Um, I've got a whole box of these papers that I buy whenever I am in a town teaching that has a good in-person art supply store. As much as I like to buy things online, paper is one of the things that I don't buy online because I want to feel it and touch it and know how it's going to work for me. So I buy the papers and I choose them in white or natural or the lightest color I can get them because I'm going to paint them. I'm going to paint them to make sure that they're not going to fade. So I'm not going to buy papers that I rely on the color. I'm going to buy papers that I rely on the inclusions or the patterns or the metallic so that I can paint them my colors with my paints and um, make beautiful papers out of them. So I'm always going to buy them in the lightest color I can get them, white or natural or the lightest color that they come. That way I can paint them from yellow all the way down to black and I give myself a full wide range of variety. So I'm going to show you a few decorative papers that I've purchased along the way and how the fluid acrylics uh, take to them and how the patterns, colors, textures still show through. And you're going to see that it's just another way to make beautiful collage paper. So let's check it out. Welcome back. Today I've got some decorative papers from the art supply store, my paintbrush, my golden fluid acrylics as well as a high flow acrylic and a paper plate. So I've picked out some pink and purple colors of my paints and I've got some decorative papers that I have bought in person at art supply stores when I go to teach. So I have chosen these for their uh, gold metallic. Uh, this one has gold and silver metallic. This one has a uh, white and black and tan and it's on sort of a brown craft paper, but it's still very light. And the last one has actually a white pattern on it, which is kind of interesting. So it's white on white, white on off white paper, and it's going to show up more when we put paint on it. So the idea here is to experiment with adding the fluid acrylics or the high flow acrylics over these patterns because the paint is not going to stick to the metallic um, so that's going to show through. These types of printed patterns in these two papers are going to show through because of the transparency or the translucency of the paint. So we're going to make use of these patterns but we're going to make sure that none of the color is going to fade because we are going to be painting it with golden professional artist colors. So the first one I like to, to show is the metallic because it's really beautiful how the uh, fluid acrylic or the high flow resists off of the metallic. So let's put out a little uh, permanent violet dark. That's my dark purple color. I've got some quinacridone magenta in the high flow and I've got some primary magenta in the fluid acrylic. So I'm going to put those out on my plate, on my paper plate. I'm going to add a decent amount of water with my brush from the water bucket. And I'm going to just brush over this gold pattern and I'm going to make myself a beautiful magenta paper with the gold showing through. So you can see how the paint is resisting off of the gold metallic pattern and it is definitely showing right through. The back side is kind of interesting. It's sort of creating a pattern that way. Um, so now I'm going to add some of the permanent violet dark and go over and do a little, a bit of a darker purple on this side. And you can see that not only can I make it pink, but I can also make it a darker purple. That's a beautiful color. Now, because it's a, a light paper, we could also paint it a light color. So if we wanted to make a yellow, we could also do a yellow sheet, yellow with gold. That is the benefit of buying this paper in an off-white, that we can paint it any color from yellow all the way down to the dark purple. Now, it's not as dramatic, I don't think, in the yellow as it was in the, uh, in the pink tones, but we can also blend into that yellow. Add a little bit more water and soften that edge, and now we've got sort of a yellow-orange, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to bring that back over here. 
and then come back in with some magenta. And now I'm creating sort of an interesting orangey yellow, but I really like the hot pink with the gold. So there you can see the contrast of the paint with the gold metallic from the paper showing through. So our next sheet is also metallic gold and silver. And I'm gonna come back into that one with a little bit of a darker alizarin crimson. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right over in the same way and you're gonna see basically the same effect. That silver and the gold metallic are resisting the paint. The paint is always gonna resist off of the metallic and the metallic pattern is going to show through and you get to determine the background color of the paper and you also get to determine that it's not going to fade. This color is not going to fade because it's professional golden fluid or high flow acrylics. So there you have another beautiful pattern paper that you got to choose the color of and it is taking advantage of the patterns that were in the decorative paper that I bought from the art supply store. So our last two are the ones that are not metallic and they're going to work in a different way but they're still going to make use of the patterns that are underneath. So let's add a brownish color to this one because that sort of has an earth tone feel. So I'm gonna add some burnt sienna and I'm gonna put that over this earth tone. I'm gonna add a little pink in with the brown since it's on my plate. A little water, make sure you add water so you can sort of let those, those patterns show through a little bit better. So now I am taking advantage of those spiral patterns which are silk screened onto this paper. They're printed onto the paper. I'm taking advantage of them, but I'm changing up the background color and I'm also, again, guaranteeing that it's not going to fade because I don't know what that paper was colored with, what that light brown was colored with. It could be, could be dye that fades in the sunlight. So now I've created a beautiful collage paper with my own colors, colors of your choosing, and those spirally patterns are showing through and you've got this great paper and spirals and i could make it in blues i can make it in greens i can make a whole plethora a whole rainbow out of this one oversized sheet it was probably 24 by 30 sheet i'm going to divide it into a bunch of small pieces and make it into a lot of different colors so last but not least is my white on white i am going to show you how that works we're going to go back into the pinks since they're already on the plate with water and I'm going to brush that over and you are going to see that pattern that white on white pattern is really going to show through the fluid acrylic and the high flow acrylic high flow is like an airbrush um, paint uh, not limited to that but it is it is uh, translucent and fluid like the fluid acrylics only it's even more viscous it's even more watery so you can add less water to the high flow otherwise it has very similar properties to the fluid acrylics so now i am letting that white lacy pattern really show through because i have tinted the paper around it in a different way, the paint is taking to the paper around it in a different way than it is taking to the white printed pattern. So there we have a few different, four different versions or ways to use your decorative papers to create beautifully colored collage papers that will not fade and will be in the palette that you need for the project that you're working on. So thank you for being here and happy Friday.